It's Math Monday, which means... No worksheets and math lessons. That's right. So instead of doing a lesson today, we get out our math games and we practice all the math skills that we've been learning over the years. Um, we've collected a lot of different games. Um, some of them we bought for math lessons and math practice, but some of them are just games we already had. Battleship, Life, Monopoly. Those are games Blockus. that people... Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people have Blockus, mm -hmm. but, but it's a great game. Yeah. They should have Blockus, right? Uh -huh. But Battleship, you can practice grids, you know, B5, things like that. A a life. Have Uno. Yeah, a lot of people have Uno and practice your numbers and matching colors for our mm -hmm. younger kids. Monopoly is great about money and buying real estate. Um, life is one that a lot of people wouldn't think about, but you can practice... Um, and talk about the difference of going to college and the income differences. You can also talk about insurance and buying properties and cars and the cost of having children. And then you can add up all that money and mm -hmm. plan for retirement. Um, we also have some other games like chess and dominoes that a lot of people have that are great ways to spend time with your kids practicing math skills. What is your favorite math game we got? Uno and Quickle. Quickle. I really like Blockus. Uh, and then Eli's favorites are probably Sleeping Queens, Uno, Uno and Dominoes, probably. Uh -huh. So we play lots of math games. Um, the kids love Math Monday. They don't have to do a worksheet. I don't have to teach math. We just get to play games. Often we'll pop a bag of popcorn and snack and laugh and play together. So today we are going to teach you a math game that you could do at home that doesn't require buying anything. You probably already have a deck of cards. It's just a normal deck. And you are going to take that deck and separate out your pot into two piles. We need one that has aces through tens. And the kings, queens, jokers, and jacks. jacks. We're not going to use these at all for the game. What else do we need? We also need markers. Mm -hmm. Or pencils. Yeah, pencils fine too. Piece of paper mm -hmm. and draw a five by five grid. So before you start playing, you need to make yourself and everybody that's playing a five by five grid. We usually make this part of the play. Um, Eden makes her own, I make my own, but Eli make, I usually make one for Eli. Uh, it can be difficult for kids to make a grid for the younger ones, they'll often have too many boxes. So you need to have five boxes going down and five boxes going across. So all the way around all these boxes. It doesn't need to be perfect like this, but it is easier for younger kids to play. And then we use, often use a marker. Um, you can use a pencil as well, but the marker is nice because once a kid makes a commitment to a number being there, then they don't change it, right? Mm -hmm. So here's how to play. You're gonna shuffle your deck of aces through tens. Flip the top card over, and you're going to write, this one's an ace, so we are going to write a one somewhere in our grid. Four, five, three, and you just continue making a choice for each number. Another one. When you come up to a number that you've already had before, you would like to try to put the numbers next to each other. So either I would have wanted to put the one here, here, or here, because at the end of the game, you're going to add up wherever there are doubles or triples. So let's see what our next number is. Three. So I would want to put my three here, here, or here. Three is a lower number, so I'm not too concerned about getting all my threes next to each other. Seven. As I go, I'm making sure to leave plenty of room for other numbers to have a double next to them. Six. Oh, 
And I didn't get my last six next to it. I didn't either. I had a pretty good game. How about you? I had an okay one. Okay, so now I'm going to take a different color, and I'm going to circle all the matches I have going horizontally and vertically. So right there, I have no matches. Here, I have a set of eight. two matches in this row. Now I'm going to go down. I like to switch to another color so I can see it. Six and ones. Nothing for this row, but here I've got two matches. Now, if I would have had a set of three somewhere, like say I would have put my five down here, you would circle all three fives. Do you have any sets of threes in yours? No. No, nope. it's okay. Now, you're going to add across and down any of your doubles. So here I have 18, so I'm gonna put a six, or I have two eights, eight plus eight is 16. 10 plus 10 is 20. Seven plus seven is 14. 2, a 10, and an 8. Okay, now I go down and do the same thing. 12, and a 2, 16, and a 10, 4, 6, and a 14. After you have all the numbers that are doubles or triples added up, you're going to add up your score so now I add 70 plus 64 from my total from both sides and I get a hundred and thirty four. What did you get? 82. 82 this time. Next time you'll get a higher yeah. score. Probably. Probably. You never know. It's, and it's just kind of... It's just like, it's a chance game. Well, but it's chance, yeah. but you also have to make some plans uh -huh. as you're going. So if you're playing with younger kids, sometimes it's really good to have them just work on flipping the cards over. They can flip and tell you what the number is, 10. So they're just working on recognizing and verbalizing their number. After they have that down, then it's great practice to have them start writing the numbers in. When Eli first started playing this game, he loved flipping the cards. He felt like he could control the game for everybody else. But then he started writing the numbers in. A lot of the numbers were backwards, a little bit off, but enough that I was able to tell what they were. It's great handwriting practice without telling him that it's handwriting. And then he got really good at figuring out how to put the same numbers next to each other. For kids Eden's age, she actually really understands the game and can process where and start planning out what numbers are more important to have next to each other. So she often gets a higher score um, because she understands the game. So sometimes I'll just play with Eli. Um, that way my score isn't too high compared to his. Um, I also recommend when you're playing with younger kids that you help them circle and find the matches. Eli's not ready yet to add up all of these numbers. They're just too big. So I'll add them up and then I let him circle the final score and practice saying a number that's bigger than 100. So that's how you play 5x5. Five five. I hope that you and your family can enjoy a Math Monday with us. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to below to see all the fun we're having at Oh, oh Golly, golly what, what a Day. day.